If you remember a few years ago, the Masterworks Chorale put on a concert uh, at St. Mary's Church, I think it was, in Auburn. Now, Katie and I didn't know anything about it, but that morning, Sandy Nichols asked us after church, you do want to go to the concert in Auburn at 4 p.m. this afternoon, don't you? <laughs> Sandy is a persuasive woman. We said, yeah. She gifted us with two tickets to Mendelssohn, Mozart, and more, remember? And we headed off to Auburn on that clear, cold afternoon, and we were rewarded with an extraordinary experience. In that beautiful church, much like our own, pictureless but beautiful stained glass windows, beautifully colored, beautiful patterns, we experienced something really extraordinary. Extraordinary not just in a musical sense, but in a worship sense. And that's what I want to talk about with you today. The powerful, even mighty role music has in our worship experience. By way of background, here's a quote from Jesus. The Gospel of Luke tells us that Jesus was asked which was the most important of all the Jewish laws. And Jesus said in his own words and language, which means in skinny Atlas language, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Now, most translations have Jesus adding the words to Deuteronomy 6, and with all your mind. That may, may be because the word for mind and the word for soul can be the same in Hebrew, nefesh. But the Hebrew Jesus was quoting in Deuteronomy 6 was clear. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your might. Might is strength, muscle, sinew, power. Meod. Meodecha means your power. To love God with all your heart, lev, means with all our loving affection. To love God with all our soul, nefesh, means to love God through and through, in our inmost self, without reservation. And to love God with all our might, all our power, meod, means put everything you have into it. There's a physicality, a bodiness to meod. Now, meod can take many forms. It's a connection of intimacy and intensity, a connection of body and spirit. It's sort of being in the zone. Champion athletes play meod. Great musicians perform meod. Great prayers pray meod. Living with all our power and might. Nothing held back. Letting it all hang out. Risking all. Doing it anyway. Meod. Music can be an entry to Mayod. In every religion I know of, music is a key part of worship. Sufi Islamic music and dance, Taizé worship and chant, Christian plain song, Protestant hymns, 
Catholic Gloria and Agnus Dei. Jewish chants and song and dance, Eastern Orthodox music and chant, Afro-American spirituals, pop Christian rock, Rastafarian ska, Buddhist heavenly chanting and drums, Confucian musical benevolence, Baha'i music, Shinto music, Hindu ragas, the Shakers danced, and today even the Quakers sing. Music is central to every religious worship experience. And if there was or, or is a religion without music, I can't find it. St. Paul in our reading today talks about living as a gift to others and himself. Living as an action. Life in Christ is a powerful action. Mayod. When I was in first grade, back in medieval times, we were seated alphabetically. With the last name Weiss, of course I was in the last row. Not knowing I needed glasses, I thought the world was a blurry place. The blackboard was something I heard being written on, but I couldn't see it. When it was time to assign groups for singing, we sang a simple song. Based on our singing ability, we were assigned to one of four groups. Nightingales, <laughs> larks, robins, and my group, crows. <laughs> the good news is I didn't have to change my seat. When it was time for singing, all the crows moved to the back, and Carson Clark joined Barbara Whitaker and me in the back row. Now, knowing I was a crow, singing was not part of my early religious experience. The first Christian church I joined was Congregational in White Plains. And as a crow, I just mumbled the unfamiliar words. I didn't realize the worship power of religious music. Not until a few years later, in an Assembly of God church, I've been in a lot of churches over the years. One bright morning, the congregation sang that old Swedish hymn, O Storegut, or How Great Thou Art. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand has made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then came the refrain. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art. When we sang that refrain, something happened. <clears throat> I experienced for the first time the liberating power of worship music. My eyes filled with tears as my body filled with sound. Not just my voice, but the whole congregation. As one joyful organ of the body of Christ. Then sings my soul, and my soul sang. 
The crow's throat opened, and my voice changed. This was something new, something wonderful. I sang and I worshipped with all my might, not just with my heart and with my innermost soul. I blessed and adored the Father, Mayod, with all my might. Now you all know there's a big difference between knowing about God and knowing God. And the difference between knowing about faith and experiencing faith. Experiencing faith is a different matter from quoting its definition. Paul wrote, this is not a matter of words, speaking of the Christian life, but of power. Your power, meodecho. The power of faith, like music, involves both body and mind. It's a physical, somatic body thing, as well as a matter of trust. But it isn't work. It's not a physical effort. It's more a matter of letting go, relaxing into it, letting go of yourself, trusting God's love in you in others, all around, sort of like floating in water, letting yourself relax and float in the lake is a matter of immersion, not thrashing. Get in the zone. God will do the work. So what's this got to do with music? everything. I believe God put standard operating principles for the universe in place. And these operating principles underlie all of physics and psychology, all of matter, all of mind and emotion. Jesus, through parable and teaching, was explaining the operating principles and urging us to understand and live by them. Modern physics views the universe as fields of tiny vibrating strings, invisible. Think of angel harps or cherub violins. When we play or live out of tune, you know it. When we're in tune, you feel it. Music in worship helps us to tune, to attune ourselves with the glory and power of the gifts God is extending to us. Music helps us open up, tune in, and relax into something greater than ourself. Music can release us from our rational selves out of the practical box we're in. Let go of our carefully wrapped selves. to act and feel with mayod, with all our might, in the zone. It's, it's hard for, for many of us. Too often, 
we're worried about being crows, or we think the church is about what we believe, not how we live in love. We lock ourselves up with what we think is possible. We don't dare reach outside of ourselves to God and to our neighbors. But music, music can lift us out of our blindness, our imprisoning chains. It takes power and energy to let the captive go free. The Holy Spirit is power, waiting and ready to fill us with flame. But our dampers are shut. Our flu is closed. We're airless. There are some things that open us up. Music is one of the miraculous elements that breaks us out of our self-imposed shells and helps us let the spirit in. We join the dance. We lose ourselves and open to the possibilities. And yes, this happens in church. This is the role of music. It's not a concert. Sure, scripture tells us to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, to please the Lord with, with cymbals and ten-string lyre and harp and, and bells and song. But does God need this? Of course not. God doesn't need the sound of music any more than God needs the fat of burnt sacrifices. This is for us, for each other, and for ourselves. Our task is to praise God and love one another in prayers, sacrifice, and music. It doesn't matter if we come early or late to the vineyard. It is for all of us. God wants us to make the music and to hear the music and to be transported by the power and meaning of the music. And when we are transported out of ourselves, opened up and awakened by the music, by making it, by hearing it with an open heart, then the Holy Spirit can transform us, can move us. We can take action. Throw our cloaks aside and stand up expecting, expecting our souls to be healed. The wind of the Spirit blows in ways we do not know. And our sails aren't always set up to catch it. Worship music can help us unreef the sails and set these tightly wrapped sails and let the power of the Spirit fill us and propel us. Haven't you been moved to tears? Haven't you found yourself singing with full voice and heart? Tearful eyes. Haven't you felt yourself lifted outside of yourself as, as you put your heart into the song? whether playing or singing or listening. A final thought. Jesus taught the first and most important commandment is, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Mayod. Then we are in tune for the second commandment, which is like unto it. Love your neighbor as ourselves. And what better way 
to love our neighbor than to make music with him. Live our faith. If your neighbor needs to be fed, feed him. If he needs to be clothed, clothe him. If he needs to be released from his prison, help to set him free. And then, and then, make the music of life with him. Mayud. And let the Spirit blow us away. Amen. And now go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Shalom.